everyone, it's Teresa, and today I have a really fun video for you. It's a stash swap with some of my friends from here on YouTube. Here's everyone that was involved, and we're going to get into it. All right, so I'm going to show you what was in my box that Cindy, um, aka that crafting lady, sent to me for this challenge. Uh, she sent me some adhesive diamond wrap from Dollar Tree, I believe. Sent me this holographic candle holder. I believe that's also a Dollar Tree item. Got these napkin rings, six of them from Dollar Tree. Got this really pretty box. I believe she said that this was a thrift store. Uh, yep, see, right down there, Goodwill. Said she even paid half of that, so. It could have been Dollar Tree, you know, for the, the price she paid, but much nicer. A bunch of gourds. She thought that was funny. I'll tell you why later. <laughs> um, and then also one of these glass uh, cutting boards from Dollar Tree. Sorry, guys, I'm running out of room. <laughs> these little mini glass containers from Dollar Tree. I'm um, everything. I think most everything else is Dollar Tree. This um, Our Nest is Best sign, also from Dollar Tree, I believe. Some buttons, and they say they are from Craft Smart. I think that's a Michaels brand. I'm not 100% sure, um, but those are pretty. I love those. This sign was from Tree Shop, the Christmas Tree Shop. So I've got that to work with. And then two packs of roses. This was closed. I was trying something out with it. You'll see a little bit in just a minute. So here's what I've got from her box. All right, first we're starting off with that Our Nest is Best. I went ahead and sanded off the part where it said best because that was in glitter. I did that with my electric sander. Um, I'll link it for you below. I love that thing. It's great, uh, especially for glitter. <laughs> and I went ahead and just gave it a good coat with some uh, Waverly chalk paint in plaster. And then the top one is a chalk paint from Folk Art. I'll link it for you below or list the name for you below. And we're adding our decal to it. And this one is, um, it's gonna be really cute. It's kind of like all centered around this whole idea of like a garden kind of thing. So um, you're gonna see here in a few minutes what I'm talking about. So this first one, uh, I wanted to do the bottom first and you'll see here in a minute, I decided to keep it kind of down to the left. And then I've got the, um, you know, I'm doing bulbs and flower seeds on this one. You guys will have to let me know how you like the lighting. Uh, usually I have an over like a lamp basically on where I'm filming. So it's not so shadowy, but I like the color that you get without it, but I like it better not to have shadows. You guys have to tell me your preference. Um, so we're just putting down our decal and now what we're gonna do, cause I think it needed something else. We're going to use one of these rub-on transfers uh, from Dollar Tree. This was from my stash, so don't get mad. <laughs> um, and I am just going to put that little flower up on the top. These are really easy to apply. Once you figure it out, you know, like where you want it, you just take the back of something, you know, like I use my little um, hot glue push her downer thing, <laughs> technical term. Uh, it's actually a spatula from the beauty section, should you be looking for it. Um, and then it gave me a lot of trouble wanting to come back up. So just, uh, the other ones didn't. I don't know why this one did not want to come back up, but I thought that that black flowering thing was really pretty. And then I'm gonna add some little detailing here from the same pack. I felt like this one kind of almost looked a little bit like seeds. So I was like, well, this is a good little Bought to put that so that's what I'm doing putting it right there and I'm just kind of cutting around any little pieces off that I want to use on this uh, little sign and I was at first I was I was on the fence on whether I should have distressed it or not I ended up not doing it um, so then I'm gonna add these little ones off to the sides just to give it something to fill it in I wanted to keep the middle part you know like the bulbs and part to be centered so I wanted to add a little detail on the uh, sides of it though and th those ones come up super easy not too too much difficulty <laughs> I don't know what was up with the first one um, 
So now we're going to also cut around and get another one to do. It's a different piece. It's a little bit longer just to add, you know, a little bit of different look to it. So you guys will have to tell me if you've been able to find any of these Revon decals. I love them. So here it is all finished bulbs and flower seeds. And you'll see in a few minutes why. All right. So on to our next one. I'm kind of tackling all my signs first. So we're going to do a solid coat of Waverly chalk paint in moss. And then we're going to do a little bit of distressing, but we're going to do some plaster first. And then we're going to add that antique wax. Now my antique wax is from folk art. Uh, it's very similar, I believe to the Waverly one. I actually have a container of it, but <laughs> uh, I haven't opened it yet. Cause I'm still, I have still have this one open. Uh, first I'm just going to do, you know, a quick, at first I was going to do a brushing. I was just going to do a little bit of a brushing antique it a little bit. And then I decided I wanted to give it a more, full coat of this antique wax. Um, I just do it with this chip, little tiny chip brush and it works out really well. I really love the way these beads end up looking. It just gives it a little bit darker color. The natural wood is really pretty too, uh, but I felt like it just needed to be a little darker. So now that that is done, I'm going to take some of the Waverly chalk painted plaster and just go around the sides and also through the middle a little bit just a little because I am going to use a white decal on this one. So I didn't want it to be too light for obvious reasons. And then we'll go in with the antique wax and we're going to add some of that on here as well. Just, you know, this is all like gardeny and everything like that. So I was like, well, it makes sense for it to be dirty, right? So it's got to be dirty. <laughs> so we're just going to add some of that. I'm going over pretty much anywhere that I had made white um, just to give it a little bit more of the brownish tone. Uh, one thing that's really fun to do, I've done it in a few videos before, is adding the antique wax to the moss chalk paint. And it almost looks like um, like a worn copper almost. You know, if you have if you have copper that's really copper, it turns green with the patina. So it just, it gives it a really cool effect. So FYI for future projects. <laughs> Next, we're going to do this bloom where you are planted or bloom where you're planted decal. Uh, I'm going to link where I found this one below. It is a free file. If you just sign up for it, I think it's like love SVG or something. I think is what it's from. I'll link it for you though. That way you can download it and use it if you would like to. If you guys are ever interested in watching a tutorial on how I download it and use it or whatever, just let me know. I'd be happy to do that. So I'm going to take a little bit of the antiquing wax and I'm just going to go over my decal lightly with it, with my finger, very technical tool I have there, right? Sometimes the best things you have to use are the tools you were born with. So gosh, isn't that the truth? <laughs> um, so we're just going over that decal just because again, I didn't want it to be that really stark white. I probably need to try to find like a barely off white uh, vinyl. That might be kind of a nice thing to look for. Has anyone ever seen that? I like an off white, like barely off white kind of vinyl, kind of like plaster, the color, you know, Waverly paint. That would be a good thing to look at. So I'm just going through and finishing all of this up and then we will be finished. Here it is. Super pretty. I love it. I love it with the green. It just kind of brings a little gardeny effect. Next, we're going to tackle this little cutting board, cover it with plaster from Waverly, like you're surprised. <laughs> and now we're going to decolletage this napkin. It's actually half of a napkin that I used on a previous project. So we're getting really thrifty with it. So just putting down a good coat of Mod Podge, and then I'm just going to plop my napkin on top of that, kind of trying to line it up. It was like almost a little too small, but it ended up working out pretty well. And it gives it a little bit of a wrinkly look to it, but I'm not mad about it. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So, and then I'll just, of course, add my coat of Mod Podge on top. And I, I listened on my last video. I had mentioned uh, that it was my first time doing a uh, decolletage. And I asked, you know, the best way to kind of finish off the edges. And I don't show it on here, but what I did do is I took a sanding block and I actually... Uh, you know, roughed up the edge, not roughed it up, but you know, like took off the excess of the napkin. So once it's good and dry, I am going to take this little plank and I'm going to stain it with a walnut wood tint from Folk Art. And then we're going to, of course, add some more antiquing to the edges of this um, cutting board now turned into a sign. <laughs> um, 
So also, so you know, this is going to be part of a playlist and it's going just to, um, you know, go through all of the stuff that we shared with our friends, the stash swap, if you will. And it is going to be part of a giveaway. So make sure that you are watching and commenting on everyone's videos. That way you get entered in to win an Amazon gift card. So that way you can build up your own stash. <laughs> I know if you're an avid crafter, who knows, you probably have a pretty good stash going, but hey, new stuff is always fun. So we're gonna add our farmer's market decal to the front part here. And I didn't wanna show you the whole thing since I've already shown it to you. <laughs> And I'm just going to hot glue down one of these little tumbling tower blocks. That way we can kind of give it a little bit of like a three dimensional effect, even though it's really not 3D, but you know what I mean. Give it to where it's kind of setting uh, out from that back panel. And then I was like, you know, it needs a little something extra. So we're just going to go ahead and add a little bit of the florals some of these little leaves from I believe one of these like wildflower bunches from Dollar Tree and uh, definitely keep an eye out for my videos upcoming I want to do a giveaway I got a whole set of these different ones um, set aside for giveaway so keep an eye out for that too here it is all finished up our little farmers market that's kind of like the whole motif I was going for next we're going to tackle this box I love it but I was like what am I gonna do if I'm not going to like completely paint over it or something. So I'm taking some antique wax on a baby wipe and I'm just going to go over it lightly with that. And what's nice is like, if you get too much in one spot, you just kind of wipe it away with the baby wipe. I'm gonna do that for the entire box. And rather than show you every bit of it, I cut that out. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and next we're just gonna add a piece of scrapbook paper right on top of the mirror because I wasn't really interested in the mirror for this particular project. I did cut off the strings as well, which I probably should not have done because now it's very top heavy, but that's okay. So add that little bit of scrapbook paper there. And next we're just going to fill the bottom part of it with some yellow paper. I think I got this when I bought something from Joann's. So it was nice, you know, thing I had available and didn't have to pay anything for. And next we're tackling these gourds. So Cindy thought she was so funny sending me pumpkins and gourds. <laughs> and um, she actually, she sent it to me and then she sent me a picture of a gnome. And she's like, look, you can make a gnome. And I was like, ha ha ha, so funny. I've had fails with gnomes. I still have not successfully made one. So I thought she thought she was so funny sending me these saying I should make a gnome. So. I've got all of them and what I did is I cut off the ends of the like curvy ones and I was thinking like here I'll take this little piece off and then I'll like, oh nope not don't do that <laughs> and I'm gonna paint them with this chalk paint from folk art in the coloring whispering wheat let that dry I think I did a good two and a half or so coats and we're gonna go over some of them a little different this one we're gonna do the antique wax and then the other ones we're going to go back with that moss so we're just doing a couple of each like that and my idea was to make them kind of look like flower bulbs um i don't know what flower bulbs they're supposed to be but they're flower bulbs in this instance at least so this was this was just kind of what i could come up with i mean i I think I probably could have tried to make them look like fruit or who knows. There's just all kinds of different things. This was probably my most challenging one to try and figure out something to do that fit in with stuff. So yeah, like I said, this one we're going to just go ahead and do in the moss. We're just going to go over it and uh, just like I said, just trying to figure out something to do with these little guys. So you can, you know what, if you have stuff in your stash, you don't know what to do with, you'd be surprised how creative you can get. Next, we're using some of these really cute little glass jars. And on this one, I was like, oh, I want to put, you know, if I could have found like little pieces of the dandelion, I would have probably put that in there. That would have been pretty. But I'm going to use some wildflower seeds that I got from Dollar Tree. I think I got four for a dollar. So I'm going to use those. I'm just going to fill up two of my little jars with the flowers seeds this is just like a wildflower bunch i thought like oh well it'll be a little different and of course they got everywhere but and we're going to add some of the buttons to the top of my little jars just to give them a little little bit of extra detail you know what i mean i thought it was really cute little sweet detail so here's my little you know box of my my you know bulbs and seeds 
And next we're gonna go and take some of these foam flowers. I've got red and pink. I'll just show you the one I make with the red. I'm just gonna take it all apart and we're going to start cutting the petals to make them look like petals. Yeah, I know, very original, but I wanted a different look to the petals, so I just kind of cut almost like an oval shape, but it comes to a point, if that makes sense. So I just kind of showed you just one to give you an idea. So cut quite a few, you know, a few of those. And I'm going to take these pine cone. Now this pine cone is actually from Cindy's house. Uh, she went in like sub freezing temperatures outside to gather up some pine cones for me. Um, because I had mentioned at one point that I, I liked the pine cone she was using in a different project. So she was sweet enough to go outside and get that. And I told her I will happily uh, down here in Florida go and uh, get her some shells from Florida for her for her project. So I still have to do that, Cindy, if you're watching. I haven't uh, been to the beach yet. <laughs> I did paint a little bit of the edges with some mineral chalk paint from Waverly. And now I'm going to start adding some of these little petals. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of glue in and I won't show you the whole thing. And I'll be honest with the red, uh, it kind of ends up looking like a poinsettia, but that's okay. Um, I would definitely probably in the future paint the petals if I was going to do something like this again. Uh, it's really a good one for Christmas though. I will say that. And it was funny when she sent me the pine cones, I said, don't worry, I'll figure out something to do with them. So I do just add all of those petals in there. I'm just kind of using the pine cone as a way to put them in there. Basically I do glue them all in there. As you see, I thought I wasn't showing it all to you. I'm sorry. I thought I was, I thought I cut a lot of this out, but Oh, I see. I just sped it up really fast. So again, the red one definitely does come out looking a lot like a um, poinsettia, but I still love it. I still think it's super pretty. I do end up adding some onto the back part of it just to kind of give it a little bit more fullness. So here they are once they're finished. I did add, uh, do a pink one as well. I made a little one smaller, a little one bigger. And we're gonna take some of these skewer sticks. I'm just gonna paint it in moss and use that as kind of like the stem. And I do show, don't show it on film, but I do end up wrapping, end up wrapping it in a, um, burlap ribbon so now this jar or this glass I wasn't really sure what to do with um, it doesn't really go with the whole motif as well as I would have liked but it, it you know I had to go with what I had <laughs> I had to meet the challenge so I do wrap it just with one little thing of this diamond wrap and then I just am pushing it down apparently to really make sure it's there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to show you this now. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just adding those little sticks in there. I'm just going to glue them in there. And again, what I ended up doing, I ended up wrapping them in like a burlap ribbon. I just felt like that made more sense. It looked a little bit better. So just easy peasy little thing to do. Just add your glue on the back, add your stick for your, you know, your stem and they're good to go. And I definitely am going to do a lot more with these pine cones come fall time. I think they'll be adorable because they're super cute and little. So I'm going to take some of this faux leather ribbon. In hindsight, I should have used like a tan color one instead of black. I just thought that the black went better with like the diamond wrap. But I should have done the tan. That would have done much better to go with um you know, to go with this project, but it is what it is. This is what I ended up doing. And I, like I said, I wish I'd gone with the tan, but that's okay. So I'm just going to glue down one spot and then I'm going to wrap it all the way around and then I'll glue down the bot, the back part. I was thinking like maybe I should fold it over to give it a better edge, but that was too bulky. So that just didn't work. So trim off my extra, put down my glue, put back on my glue again. And then there we go. We're just going to press it down and these napkin rings, I, I don't know. Again, if, if I had not done the black, I could have definitely like wrapped this in something else. So I'm just going to put it down almost like a little foot for the glass piece. These were my last, you know, three items that probably could have been done a little different to go with the motif, but it's okay. We're just going to go with what we, with what we've got. <laughs> so once that is all nice and secure, I was thinking like, should I double it up? But I left it as a single. Here's the little flowers and the little glass, super pretty. And here's the lot of the set. So make sure that you go check out the rest of the playlist and 
go see who I sent my box to and what I gave them to work with. And don't forget, I have a new video coming out on Thursday this week. And on Thursday at eight o'clock Eastern, we're gonna have our Crafty Talk with Teresa at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube. And I will see you next time.